Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. One of the most curious features of ancient Egyptian statues is why so many have their noses removed. From sculptures of pharaohs to gods and goddesses, and even monuments such as the Great Sphinx, so many noses are missing. But why? This has always been a common question asked to Edward Bleberg, curator of Brooklyn Museum's collection of Egyptian, classical and ancient Near Eastern art, and is the subject of a fascinating article on the website artsy.net, which is linked below in the description. It is almost taken for granted now that most statues miss their nose, and Egyptologists and independent researchers always have to visualise how the statue would have once looked. The continuity of the general style of Egyptian art is obvious. But the power struggles between dynastic rulers, invasions from outsiders, and major periods of upheaval, such as in the 18th dynasty, have certainly left their scars. The damage seen to statues is obviously purposeful, as there is a consistent pattern of damage. And although a protruding nose is obviously most at risk on any statue, like the handle of a teacup, what we see in ancient Egypt is obviously systematic, and flat reliefs also show smashed noses. Such sculptures and reliefs often reside in tombs and temples, and they therefore had a ritual purpose. Edward Bleberg said, All of them have to do with the economy of offerings to the supernatural. In a tomb, they serve to feed the deceased person in the next world with gifts of food. In temples, we also often see depictions of gods receiving gifts from kings. It is believed that a god could inhabit an image of the same god, and for humans, after death, it was believed that part of a soul could inhabit a statue of their likeness. As Bleberg says, systematic vandalism of statues therefore intended to deactivate the strength of that image. Egyptians believe that by looking after and providing for the gods when alive, in return they will care for us after we die. Therefore statues or reliefs were a kind of meeting point between the supernatural and the mortal world. But it is believed that damaging such images could limit or stop this from taking place. Apparently, the ancient Egyptians believe that the part of the body you damage on a statue means that part can no longer do its job. Therefore removing the nose means the statue's spirit can no longer breathe and it is therefore effectively dead. As Bleberg points out when talking to artsy.net, if you hammer off the ears from a statue of a god, it will no longer be able to hear your prayers. In statues that show human beings making offerings to gods, this act is often portrayed with the left arm, and so we often find statues without this arm so it cannot offer to the gods. Even the most petty tomb robbers are believed to have destroyed statues of the deceased person they are robbing, as they would have been worried that the dead person could still take their revenge. The act of damaging statues and reliefs of the dead person is a practice that happened throughout dynastic history, as the beliefs we have discussed continued all the way through ancient Egyptian history. It is the same reason we find damaged mummies. Bleberg also explains that ancient hieroglyphs say that warriors would create wax effigies of their enemies and then destroy them. Pharaohs would offer severe punishments for anyone who dared to threaten their likeness, and there seems to have been genuine worry about this. New rulers of Egypt would also use this belief system to their advantage when they came to power. For example, Tutmos III virtually eliminated all imagery and inscription regarding Hatshepsut as a way to stamp his power. In my last video, I discussed how there is all but nothing left of the famous 4th dynasty king, Khufu, who historians say was responsible for changing the state religion, closing the temples and forcing the country into labour. Tutankhamun and the pharaohs that came after him began removing all traces of the so-called heretic king, Akhenaten. They removed his existence, his legacy and any chance he had in having any sort of afterlife. Many ancient Egyptian tombs and temples had niches to protect statues, or they erected false walls but had two holes so the eyes could see through and therefore offerings could be made. The damage we see to statues isn't the work of reckless vandals, it is precise work and the chiselling is often rather skilled. Sometimes the name of the deceased is erased, which shows that the tomb robber could also read. Bleberg says that the ancient Egyptians didn't view the statues and reliefs as works of art, but they were in fact more like equipment, things made so perfectly because they had a particular purpose. Destroying them was related to their belief system in what these statues and reliefs did. 
Images of people and of the gods held real power in Egyptian society, and often there were many reasons to destroy them. I have just launched a new YouTube channel called Space and Planet, where I present the latest space and earth science news, as well as independent scientific research. Please subscribe now, I have placed a link in the description below. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.